Hello and welcome to this third video in the Lockdown Learning Series where we're taking a look at WaveLab elements. So today in this video we're going to be looking at, to a degree, mastering. So this is definitely not a definitive mastering tutorial. Mastering is a, uh, real mastering is a dedicated skill which involves years of practice and listening etc and a lot of people go yeah i've mastered something and what they actually mean is they've just compressed it within an inch of its life and then put some really dodgy eq on it but we're just going to look at a very the very basics of this and really i'm going to show you the tools that you can use and experiment with because these may be the only tools that you have so just going to load up uh, the the track we've been looking at previously but this this is the unmastered version so you can see there's peaks etc it's it doesn't look like a commercial track would look like if you looked at the the mastered version of this you'll see that it's it's much flatter so in fact i'm going to load that mastered version up and if we zoom out on that you can see that the mastered version has so flicking between the two, the, the mastered version is is generally much louder to listen to. This is a, a rather unfortunate thing called uh, the loudness wars by many people where if you don't have a track which looks and sound like this, it just gets completely obliterated, particularly in the in the sort of genre of dance music where everything is just taken beyond what really are the, the normal limits for distortion, etc. But that's a debate for another time. So we're just going to be looking at doing a bit of work to this track to try and bring its level up and make it sound a bit better. This is an important part of your process to do after you've finished working on the track. So generally you wouldn't apply these processes while you're working on the track because it creates a, a full sense which means you're, you're relying on this to make the track sound good. So really you should make the track sound good beforehand and then this is like the icing on the cake rather than just making the cake entirely out of icing which I'm sure some people would think, yeah, that's a great idea, but that, that's not for me. Right, so the the main tool we're given here is Master Rig, but we've also got the ability to look using the spectroscope. So if I just play a part of this track, we can see, one thing we can see is we've got pretty good representation of all frequencies across the entire range, which is a good thing. So. You can see here on this part where we can hear those individual parts, we can actually see peaks and those are the, the harmonics of the notes which are being played, which are moving around as we go. But once it gets into a more complicated part, we can see it's it's pretty, you know, pretty generally smooth across the whole range, which is okay. There's no major EQ issues with this track. Sometimes you hear tracks one somebody sent to me yesterday where it definitely needs some EQing to do. This is where something like Master Rig would come in. So this is in your master section here. You can turn it on and off with this not particularly colorblind friendly control here where the green and red don't look that different to me, but as I say, I'm colorblind, so that's my problem. We click on Master Rig and we open it up. So the first thing we have is an equalizer. So we've looked briefly at equalizers in a previous video in this series. There's definitely good videos to watch uh, elsewhere on YouTube about this. I find the choice of default frequencies for this rather strange and also the fact everything's on peak and you know we start out at 25 hertz and go up to 500. So let's say just for the sake of argument, we wanna just give a bit more top end to this, this track. So we would change band four into a high shelf, take it somewhere up to maybe 5K or plus, and then just add a bit in. So if you ever on your master, and if you're going above sort of a few dB, so maybe three or four, there's something wrong with the, the source track that you really need to deal with if you can. So playing this back now, We're making a subtle difference to that top end. So you can hear that's really picking out the brightness. You know, that's probably, that's too much for me, so. And always be sure that you're comparing by, by turning what you've done on and off, because it's easy to lull yourself into a full sense of security. Don't listen to it really loud, okay? so. I'm renowned amongst people that I work for for listening to things pretty quietly because if you listen to it loud, if it's too loud for you to be able to talk and be heard clearly, 
if you're listening to that for any length of time, your ears and your brain are going to get tired and then you're going to make crazy decisions. So one of the things people do early on in their musical career is you, you finish something late at night and you think, that's the best piece of music I've ever done. It's amazing. And then you get up in the morning and listen to it and you go, well, clearly someone's been in and uh, altered all these settings because it sounded amazing last night and now it sounds bad. And I think the main reason for that is your ears are tired, your brain's probably tired, but your ears are definitely going to be tired if you've been listening to it loud. It doesn't take long at all for your ears to just lose the plot. And then you make terrible decisions. It's it's a bit like if you had glasses on and they were smeared with peanut butter and you were painting something and you go, oh yeah, this looks amazing. And then in the morning your your glasses are clean and you go, why does everything look like that? So just trying to make sure you reference back to what you've done and what you haven't, you know, what you've changed and what you haven't changed just between the two to make sure you're making positive changes. Don't be afraid to just go, you know what, that's bad. I'm going to start again, but also listening to it pretty quietly. Those are, you know, my main tips on this front. If there was anything else we needed to do, let's have a quick listen. So let's listen to the bottom end. So let's say we just wanted to accent that bass drum a bit. We would put it on the frequency that it's at and we could possibly put that up. Although... Yeah, even that small change, I'm not entirely keen on, so I probably wouldn't do that in this case. But you could do if you wanted to beef things up, etc. So you can do some work here, but generally, if, if you're doing specific things like that, you may want to do it uh, back in the track. But sometimes you find you need a little bit of mid-range cut, etc., to to help out with that. But minor changes are important. But there are other modules we can add here. This is not the ultimate in mastering. You know, you'd want a dedicated mastering suite, something like Ozone, etc. But then that's significantly more expensive than this entire package if you bought all of this from Steinberg. We can add modules. You click here, and we've got dynamics so limiter etc so let's just have a quick play with those so we're going to look at the limiter here so if we play the track so we can see it's just doing a tiny little bit of limiting here we can bypass it so I'm just going to bypass them here yeah I think I think that's okay you know again it's not doing anything too drastic which is important don't make it sound like it's just been squashed completely within a million you know it's had a million tons of the garbage compactor from the Star Wars movie put on it um, you can turn this up so if you turn the gain up you'll see and hear the effect you know now it's sound, it sounds really horribly flattened so it can breathe a bit there but you can hear it starting to pump it's really bringing out that side chaining pumping etc so that's probably you know going a little bit too far Now there is also a compressor on here, which is a, a two band compressor. So we've got a bass band in this case and everything else. Um, compression is a challenging thing to explain in short videos on YouTube. And I remember it took me quite a few goes to get into it. So I'm I'm just not going to mess with that at the moment. We maybe we'll come back and look at compression at some point. But it, in 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 my cohort when I I was learning this it it confused and put so many people off I think it was better just to not worry about it for the time being because at the moment you're probably only making music for you to listen to and I don't want you to you know get discouraged by doing that kind of thing we've got saturation which you may want to do on a track so this is adding in distortion so again it's two band and you can saturate each band separately you can have a bit of fun with this this will probably suit some styles of music more than others so you know if you're if you're recording or if you've been making you know sort of traditional rock 
kind of sounding things often these kind of things can work really well there's a lot of stuff that i've worked on with bands that i've recorded where adding tape or tube distortion to, to tracks and to the overall master really gives you that authentic this sounds like it's been recorded on tape and sounds like a vintage recording kind of sound which sometimes i do without people telling people what i've done and they're like oh why does this why doesn't this sound like it's on a computer and it's, that's one of the reasons so you can play around with that turn the drive up see how you get on with that and there's also an imaging module so you can control the stereo width so there's there's reasons why you can make things sound wider than um the original stereo amount now here as with all these others you can control the frequency at which one switches over to another and in this case it's often nice to have high frequencies have a bit more width to them particularly because your ability to perceive the position of low frequencies isn't as good as with high frequencies so you can increase the stereo width let's say of the high end so here so this is just making that the upper frequencies a bit wider in the stereo image so any stereo imaging that's already there is going to be accentuated which is often what has been done on a lot of masters that i've i've uh, ended up doing so this is definitely say this isn't a mastering tutorial that's uh, a long-winded process that requires quite a bit of precision etc but just have have a bit of a play with these because you might just find oh i like these and say remember to turn things on and off to compare them with how you started and whether or not you're actually making a positive difference and also to turn the whole thing on and off as well just to make sure so if we listen to the difference with it on Yeah, it's definitely sounding a bit brighter from that EQ. I'm not sure about that mid-range scoop. I'll probably turn that off because I think that sounds a bit odd in comparison. We'd have to listen with a bit more detail than how I'm listening at the moment as to whether the imager is making a difference. And also, one way to do this is to make multiple mix downs with different amounts of limiter and then listen to them, which is what I'm going to cover in... The next video and that actually ironically involves for me always involves putting it back into cubase so we'll look at that in the next video but that's been a brief look at some of the processing you can do in the master section in wavelab i hope you found that useful and i'll see you again soon